literally like every second question we are still like this well <laughs> funny story moved to the gold coast tomorrow he did not get a second date where my patience was being tested i've saved the best for last i'm already cringing hey guys what's up also i need to fix because it's gonna annoy me beautiful fabulous oh see no, it's still not right boom okay i think we're banning the money with that hey guys <laughs> welcome to the video you guys may have seen the trend recently in my videos where it's been like weekend in the life weekend vlog comes from the weekend with me so i personally love the weekend vlogs but i think it was time to switch it up a little bit put the poll out to you guys you guys wanted a q a so here i am with the q a occasionally i will do q a's just on my instagram stories at the question box and you guys like you come up with pretty good questions right but the questions that you guys have come up with for this video are i'm quite proud so thank you very much for coming in clutch with those there was like probably a couple hundred questions that came through in the notes on my phone I've kind of put them together into topics so that we can like address one thing at a time let's get into some questions so the first topic we have is motivation and I did not realize that this was such a area of curiosity in my life literally like every second question was to do with motivation routine like that kind of stuff how do you motivate yourself to get up and go to the gym every day i don't really have an answer for this i feel like it's just something i do i personally love going to the gym it's like the one thing i do for myself during the day you know that sounds really morbid i do stuff that i want to do during the day but it's like the first part of my day it's something that makes me excited to get out of bed. A lot of people are asking how I get up so early. It's because I have something to look forward to. Like the minute I wake up, I'm like, yes, I get to go to the gym. And on the back end of that, a lot of people are asking how I get up so early. The key to waking up early is to go to bed early. If you want to get up at like, say, I don't know, 6 o'clock. Ideally, if you're getting up at 6 a.m., you want to be going to bed at 10 o'clock so you can get a full 8 hours of sleep. But say you currently go to bed at midnight and you wake up at 8 a.m. Me, personally, I would go to bed 15 minutes earlier each night and wake up 15 minutes earlier. And also, having, like, your clothes set out the night before just such, like, a simple thing that takes literally two seconds to do. When you wake up in the morning, it's just one less thing to think about. How to motivate yourself. A lot of us don't have complete control over our day. We've got work, we've got school, we've got commitments, right? But try and have, when you wake up in the morning, try and have something to look forward to like as soon as you wake up be like oh yeah cool I'm looking forward to doing that today for me that's a gym first thing in the morning which makes getting out of bed a lot easier moving on to the topic of friendships what is your advice on how to maintain a good friendship I feel like a friendship it requires effort from both parties right so if like if you're the one who's constantly giving 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 and the other person's not same with relationships don't stay in a relationship or friendship where people are like taking advantage of you or like not reciprocating the effort that you're putting in definitely requires effort from both parties and it should be to an extent effortless i don't know if that makes any sense requires effort from both parties but at the same time is effortless that is such a contradiction now that i'm hearing it out loud but it makes so much sense in my head <laughs> are you still close with the smeg flat apart from the fact that we all live in different cities we are still like this we're still in touch every single day our group chat is still popping off multiple times a day what is your top memory at the smeg flat we miss the core group we miss the core group too, honestly. But my favorite memory of the Smeg Flat, I was actually looking at this question last night. It would genuinely just be the nights that we had at home. Someone would be cooking dinner. We'd all sit down. We'd watch some random TV show together. We'd switch like the fairy lights on and just chat. Literally, it was like a sleepover every single night. And it was just so much fun. How do you balance working and spending time with friends and family? So for me, my Monday to Friday is work. As soon as five o'clock on a Friday hits, my computer's shut, work off to the side. My weekend is for family and friends. Occasionally during the week, I might do like, obviously I live with my family, so that makes that pretty easy. For my friends, occasionally I might catch up with them midweek, but only if there's like something that we're going to or we're doing. But yeah, my weekends are for friends and family and my work week is for work. Moving on to the topic of flatting. Best saving and money advice you have for someone going flatting. Definitely separate your wants from your needs. For me when I was flatting I was a student and so financially things were quite tight. Every now and again like if I got to like because I got paid monthly which was a little bit annoying but when it got to like the end of the month if I had like a bit of surplus money I'd be like do I want to save this or do I want to buy something that I've had my eye on for a while. I feel like when you're at uni it's so easy to just buy stuff i've had like a wish list on my phone of things that i look at i'm like oh yes i want to buy that add it to the wish list put like how much it is next to it and then rank it in the wish list of where i want it like how 
much of a priority it is to me. And so if I'm like, oh, I want to buy something off my wish list, I'll open it and I'll look at what's at the top and be like, do I actually still want that? Mm, no. And then I'll like take it off and I feel like that saves me from spending money on things that I don't necessarily need. Also keeping a budget. I kept a spreadsheet of the money that I had coming in and the money that was going out and it was just really eye-opening to see like how much I was spending and I could see like the areas if I'd gone out for dinner a few too many times I'd be like oh okay next month I need to like rein in on that and just like save a bit of money in that area. Next question is realistic flatting expenses and budgeting. So I can only speak from my experience obviously I was flatting in Hamilton which was pretty cheap. For us we were flatting in a four bedroom house but we had five people there because we had the house had like a second lounge which we turned into a bedroom so in that respect it kind of made it cheaper for us i personally paid 160 dollars a week which i know all of you who are in auckland or wellington right now will be crying because i know that that is very cheap in comparison electricity and wi-fi and stuff worked out to like 20 dollars a week food was normally around 40 dollars a week so what's that like 220 dollars a week but that's obviously not including like other stuff that i did outside of the house and do i miss flatting yes i do miss flatting a lot all right moving on to questions about my living situation do you like living in auckland yes i do but mostly for the fact that my family is here i said it in my 21 things i learned at 21 video something about like home oh yeah home is about the people not the place like i like auckland because it's where my family is but if my family wasn't here like would I be here? Mm, probably not. Do you think you'll always live in Auckland or would you ever move? No, I don't think I will be in Auckland forever to be honest. Like I'm already kind of like thinking maybe I might move but I don't really know at this stage. Are you going to be moving out of your parents house soon? I loved your house content. I love the house content too and I am so excited for eventually when I do get to like set up all that furniture in another house. But I don't have any plans to move out of home at the moment just because I'm trying to save some money. And to be honest, this is more like a house sitting gig. My parents are away all the time, so I pretty much have the house to myself, which is quite nice. Scared I'll feel regret moving back home after a few years at uni, how to adjust. I completely understand how you might be feeling like this. For me, I have a super close relationship with my parents and I don't have any other siblings at home. So for me, moving home, like it was pretty easy and I understand how it might not be the case for a lot of other people. The luxury about living at home in comparison to renting somewhere is there's no fixed term contract. So normally if you move into a rental property or a flat you're set up there for at least a year whereas if you're at home if you're like mm, this isn't working you provided like I know there's a lot more to it but you most most of the time there's no nothing legally binding you to stay there just keep that in the back of your mind do you have a goal on when you'd like to purchase your first home well <laughs> funny story i did have a goal um i wanted to buy one when i was fresh out of uni that is what i thought in 2020 that's what i thought was going to happen i don't know where i thought that i was going to get a house deposit from because looking back i find that quite humorous now that goal has obviously shifted and i'd like to say maybe in the next five years but i don't know do you think you'll do an oe Yes, probably not for a couple more years because again, I am I still have a student debt. Like I need to just sort out my finances a little bit because like travel is so expensive. If you had to move overseas right now, where would you go? 110% I would move to the Gold Coast tomorrow. One of my friends, Nicole, moved to the Gold Coast in February and she is just living her best life. And like every time she posts something, I message her and I'm like, bro, you're making me want to move to the Gold Coast. So who knows <laughs> how's life at the moment after graduating and working full-time it's funny i feel like i talked about this briefly on my instagram story but i feel like towards the end of uni i had like a pretty good work-life balance like or well, uni work life balance and then when i finished uni and i was like oh now i don't have uni my plate is just work and life i feel like i had that pretty down pat and then all of a sudden the last couple months i don't know what has happened i think it's because the days have like felt shorter because the sun's been setting earlier but i feel like i just don't have as much free time theoretically work is only from 8 30 till 5. all other time around that i can do whatever i want now onto the hot topic of dating this next question i read it last night and i was like i need to prepare for this because there's no way that i can think of this on the spot what are your non-negotiables for dating well, funny you may ask that. I actually listened to a podcast the other day on this exact topic. It was, oh my gosh, what are their names? Tori and Chad Masters. They did a podcast with the heart of dating. And anyway, they inspired me to write down some non-negotiables for dating. So I've written them in my diary last night. So allow me to read them out. Loves Jesus more than me and is unashamed about their faith. Loves their family and enjoys spending time with them. Can be trusted to lead me. Stewards their time and resources well speaks highly of their peers and has a kind spirit, 
has a heart for serving, is open and great at communicating, leads a similar lifestyle, embraces community, makes me feel loved and appreciated through my love languages, wants to spend time with me, shows interest in my hobbies, and encourages me in my faith. So I guess that leads me on to the next question. How are you coping with your breakup? Are you ready to look for another relationship? Okay, two parts to this question. How am I coping after my breakup? Honestly, thriving, great, fantastic. Are you ready to look for another relationship? No. This is my season of singleness. I feel like I will be single for a while and I'm totally fine with that. I'm just excited for God to work in and through me and to see like, it's, gonna, it's a good time. It's great. I'm enjoying the stage of life that I'm at right now, put it that way. Christian dating advice. Since I have been single, when I was previously single, I was not a Christian. Now that I'm single again, I am now a Christian. And my advice would be to dedicate some time to listen to Michael Todd's Relationship Goals series on YouTube. It is amazing. I took so many notes. Alrighty, moving into the topic of faith. How do you personally grow and strengthen your relationship with God? For me, first thing I do when I wake up in the morning is my daily devotional and Bible reading. Most of the time when I'm listening to music, nine times out of ten I'm listening to praise and worship. I play guitar, so I feel like I connect with God when I'm playing guitar and doing praise and worship while I'm playing guitar. Obviously through prayer and just having chats with him throughout the day. What is God teaching you at the moment? 110% patience. It was funny, I was like praying to God that he'd help me have more patience. I can have a short fuse at times and then I become very passive aggressive, which is not fun for anyone, myself included. And so I was just praying that I'd, he'd help me like be more patient. And then all of a sudden I was in all these situations where my patience was being tested and I was like what the heck I just prayed that you'd help me to be more patient and now I'm like what's going on like obviously I've asked him for patience and so he's putting me in situations to help me grow and develop the skill of being patient how do you stay connected to God during hard seasons for me I feel like during hard seasons that's a time where I still like I really run to God and I'm like like you know how to get me through this situation we're in the valley we're in there together and you're going to take me back up to the mountaintops and kind of just communicate with them through prayer and praise and worship and the Bible and all of that stuff that I mentioned a couple of questions ago. How do you prioritize your own values when everyone's doing something else without feeling FOMO? I put this question under the faith little section here because my, my faith is the foundation of the values that I have as a person. And I'm so firm in my values that I don't feel FOMO when people are out doing things that doesn't align with my values. All right, now we have a few random questions. What was your experience like for getting your new glasses, the eye test and choosing frames? So I have never had glasses up until this year. Poor eyesight runs in my family. Unfortunately, I have now also joined the club. So I'm a member of the AA, so I went through Specsavers and got a free eye exam. My eyes are super sensitive, so when they were trying to do the eye test, it didn't. It was quite hard for me, but that's fine. I feel like most people wouldn't have an experience like that. Choosing the frames was kind of interesting because I've never really had glasses before, and I didn't want to spend an arm and a leg on them. I literally just went into Specsavers. I was like, show me your cheapest options, and so that's what they did. I don't particularly love how they look on me, but they were the cheapest, so. That's that. Reasons why you went with an electric car. I know it's cheaper, but any other real reason. Obviously the cost saving was like my number one reason. I have saved literally thousands of dollars, but also like my emissions and stuff. I know that there's a lot of misinformation out there about that. Um, if you're concerned about that, I'll link a really good video down below that it kind of explains at all. It is the way of the future and I know like EVs, don't get me wrong, they don't work for everyone. There's a whole multitude of reasons why not everyone can have an EV. But for me, I knew that it would work for my lifestyle and it would save me money and it would be better for the environment and I had the financial means to invest in an EV. So that's what I did. Overall thoughts on BFT. So BFT is a gym that I go to. It's like a group fitness class type of thing. I absolutely love it. The community is amazing. It has really tested me in my mental and physical stamina. My only hesitation is that it's very expensive, but then I also am like, well, I'm not paying for petrol, so I can pay for a slightly more expensive gym membership. But yeah, it is amazing. I'd highly, highly recommend. What's something you've learned this year? Um, uh, hmm, mm. Well, it's not really something I've learned this year. It's something that I've kind of known all along, but it's really been solidified this year as Romans 8.28, how God works all things together for good for those who love him. What do you do in a day for work? I work for a social media agency and my job title is account executive so I'm kind of like a junior account manager 
in a nutshell, my job is going into our clients' accounts and responding to comments and messages. Outside of that, coming out with marketing strategies through like Facebook and stuff. Just like general behind the scenes, copywriting, bit of creative work. Yeah, I love it. It's great. And okay, I've saved the best for last. Most embarrassing story so far this year and I am already cringing. I actually don't know if I'm gonna be able to tell this story without like literally like curling up into a ball. I really hope that the person who is also will not be named but also features in the story is not watching this. I'm sure they won't be, but if they are, I can they will for sure let me know that they've been watching this. I feel like kind of bad for telling this story, but I feel like, because they probably don't even know what they've done and they probably didn't find it embarrassing for Okay, <clears throat> so a few weeks ago, I went on a date with this guy and with the, this is like half an hour into the date and we sat down and he looks at me and he goes, oh my gosh, this is so embarrassing. He looks at me and he goes, there's something on your face that's really being annoying me and reaches out to like move it. And so it's on my face like up here somewhere. And as soon as he moves to like wipe it off my face, I knew exactly what it was. He thought it was food. I'm just going to give you a second to see if you can realize what it was. Let me give you a hint. I have a skin condition called psoriasis. <laughs> I don't think you realize this at that point. I'm someone, like, I really value my personal space. I'm not a physical touch kind of person at all. But anyone coming into my personal space, <clears throat> it really just, like, makes me feel really uncomfortable. So we were not off to a good start here. So anyway, he comes in to wipe whatever it is off my face. He doesn't, he thinks it's food. I know it's my psoriasis. And obviously, it doesn't move because it's attached to my face, right? But to cover it up, he wipes, realizes it's not going to move swipes my hair behind my ear and I was just kind of like like obviously I don't want to say anything because I don't want to be rude but I don't think he really caught like I, I feel like he was not picking up what I was putting down and he just which is great I'm glad that he wasn't embarrassed about it I was embarrassed though so yeah that's the most embarrassing thing that has happened to me this year and no he did not get a second date thank you guys for watching I've literally been filming for like nearly 40 minutes now so this video is really gonna have to be trimmed right back Oh, I'm so embarrassed. I shouldn't have thought that up because I'm, I'm so embarrassed. Let me wrap this up so I can go and cringe in my own company. But thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you to everyone who sent in questions. Sorry I couldn't get through all like a few hundred of them. But anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. Stay safe, stay well, make someone smile, and I'll see you in my next video. Oh, I love friends that hype you up. Today is not the day for me to struggle with beginning. Take a thumbnail. Okay, great. I feel like my advice sucks right now. What am I trying to say? So I just need to get my ducks in a row. Okay, great. Beautiful thumbnail. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful.